One of the things that we do when we go to the lumber yard and we're picking our wood, we try to pick boards that are flat, straight, and that's not going to really be very possible mostly, especially if you're buying rough boards like this, where it's been band sawn or circular sawn, and usually, but we want to buy the extra width. This, is, this board is one and one eighth thick. So I've got to plane this down if I want to board one inch. I'd have to, I might even have to buy thicker stock because when I eyeball along this length here, this has a very visible bow along the length. And when I sight it this way, I can't quite tell whether it's twisted, but it's got some uh, cup in it, which means it's going to be hollow. Let me show you with this board what I mean. A cup would be like this. Now that has to be eliminated because if 1 16th on this side of cup, then it has a hollow on the other side that's 1 16th. So that means I'm going to reduce the thickness of that board by 1 8th. Now along the length, this would be a bow or a crook along the length. So this would be flexed or bent that way. And this is, this is a, a characteristic that occurs in different woods for different reasons. On the other hand, I could have a twist which is like this. Now the twist is very, very important that we've got to eliminate this twist. So those are the three key areas. There may be others, knots and undulation in grain and things like that, but generally those have to come out. This one has all of those characteristics. It's got a bow along its length. Um, it's got a cup in the middle. Let me see if I can highlight some of this for you. There's my cup. Um, let me give a little extra light in there so you can see what we're talking about. Right inside there. Now if I flip this board over, this is all part of the drying process. It's not a floor with the kiln. It's not a, a, a floor with the sawyer that milled it. So here you can see both sides. I've got the, the belly of this board upwards. So that has to go. Now using a long plane will help with some of this if it's not straight, but I go to a small plane first and um, there used to be a plane that you could buy and you can still actually buy them today. They've started manufacturing them again. But if you're not into spending too much money, you can take a basic number four plane. This is my smoothing plane and on this edge, I don't know, if we can show you there, the blade goes pretty much straight across all the way. I have another number four plane, and the reason I bought these planes is because I can have each plane dedicated to tasks. So when I put this one here, I think you can see that I've got a convex edge going along the edge of the plane. I've also set the frog fairly far back, so I have a wide open uh, uh, opening for the shavings to go through and I've also set the cap iron away from the edge and I can show you that too so it's quite a distance away from this edge here so you can see I've got about an eighth of an inch it could be more uh, that way when I come to planing this surface I've got a slight hollow and this is perfect for removing a lot of stock very quickly. So I'll show you how we do that. First of all, I'm gonna try and take some of the rise out of this board. So I've got it dogged in my vise here, like this, nice and solid. You can go along the bench top. There may be different ways that you could attack this. And um, so what I do, is make sure it's nice and solid, seated on the bench. I'm going to take the this plane here. Oh, one thing I didn't show you on here. Let me show you before we go. This is kind of hard to show, but we'll show you as we go down that I've got that centered on the board, and that's showing quite a remarkable amount of twist in there. This is very typical when your wood is drying. So. This can happen to anybody. It depends on what part of the tree it comes from very often. So we're going to plane, not with the grain here, we're going to go across this grain this way. So 
And I'll lift this up in a minute so you can see what we're doing. So I'm going to take a little bit more off. And what this will create is a series of small ridges going across the grain. But instead of going with the grain, which might be hard on me, I'm going across the grain because this plane will cut very nicely across here. So I'm taking off the hump that's in the middle all the way along this board from one end to the other just to get the board flat across. So I'm taking out the rise here. So I look in here, still have a very big hump in the middle. And I work back along the board like this, a slight tangent to the grain. Now this has more hump where you are than here. This is quite a bit less hump here. So I keep going across like this. Now I'm planing into end grain here. I'll show you what the result is. Let's see if I can show you what this does here. So I've got undulation in there, but that's going to come out in a heartbeat with a smoothing plane or a jack plane. Here it's planing fine. When I get to this edge, I'm going into this end grain. So at some point I'll turn this around to get that down. I could do it now to that level. What tells me here, if I'm planing this way, when I was planing across this way, coming this direction, I was planing with the grain. If I go this way now, can you see this is tearing this end grain? That means the grain is rising up with a belly from either end. So this one really has to be plain in this direction. So you can plane this way, going across the grain at 30 degrees, all the way across. And then when you get to the rise here, this is like a topographical map. If I look at this, this rises up to the peak. Not sure if you can understand what I want to show you. But this is the peak of the hill. And this is coming, these, under, these are the height rings that you get on a topo map. So like this. So this means I'm planing into the end grain here, I'm planing into the end grain here. Makes it quite difficult, but... That's the main advantage to planing across the grain to start with, just to get it down. And we can tackle that opposing grain when we get to those lower levels. But the first time, all we're doing right now is getting this flat across here. Now, I don't let the plane follow this curve like this. I'm taking off the hump in the middle. I'm getting pretty close. The longer the stroke now, the flatter this wood is getting. But I might try my winding sticks fairly soon. In case I need to start adjusting here and here before I actually get any lower. You see, this point here is very high, which means this one is very high. So what I would do, instead of taking any more off here, I would work this area here, start getting this down first, like this. Now I'm focusing on this side here. And if I take my plane now, I think you can see, maybe you can. I still have some 
height to take off the belly, but not as much. Can you see in there? Good. Get my breath back. This is quite an upper body exercise here. So my strokes are now getting much longer as you can see. This makes a very fine scrub plane. You can get them coarser. Let's put these on. See if we're doing any corrective work here. Oh yeah. We still have more, which is great because this is where visibly I need to take it off anyway. As soon as I've got some of the twist out, I'll start focusing on long grain planing. almost across the full width of the board here apart from the undulations from the crown on the blade I'm pretty close well, one more visual check you can actually feel a lot through the plane uh, A little bit more. I'm going to check along my length as well here to see what's happening in the belly. I've got a hollow, quite a hollow in this midsection, so that means I still have to take a lot off this end here. So you have to feel after where. you feel the best position for your planing is going to be. I'm still planing into the end grain, but I don't need to worry yet. This is working great. In a little while, I'll be going to a longer plane. Just check yourself as you go. Oh, wrong plane. Flat. That's definitely flat enough for me. Well, my main focus now will be the twist. Actually, I would say this is twice the width of this, so remember that what I can see is actually twice as much twist as there really is. So I might focus more on here now, I've got down here, and also on the length of the board. It's still got quite a cup in there. Now I'm going to take advantage, I'm planing into the end grain here, across the grain like this, And actually, planing into the end grain at this level is not a negative thing. It's not a negative thing because it's pulling my plane down into the surface. So I'm taking advantage of that just to get myself down on this very, very high spot. So. So soon I'm going to turn this around to plane out the rough area. So I sight down here, sight down here. We're getting there. So I'm going to try my winding sticks from one end to the other this time. Remember that little dot goes in the middle. That centers your winding sticks on the board. If you're overhanging here, you can see this tilts to one side. 
or here it could tilt uh, half that distance, not too bad. High here and here. So a little bit more work here. Oops. I've got plenty of width on here. Actually, this is way out of square. I have to take about 3 sixteenths off this top edge here. We can turn around, work with the grain, like this. plane yeah. now I don't have one ounce of twist in this board the only thing I want to do actually even along its length it's not bad at all in fact it's really quite good just check your plane make sure it's not set too deeply this is the longer plane so this is going to you can hear this riding over the high spots, listen. So it's hitting the very high spot here. Now that's hitting the end grain again. So I really did pick a bad board to demonstrate this on in the sense that it's harder. But we're going to get this down. And you can still even with this long plane set to a normal setting you don't have to plane with the grain like this in fact I would suggest you do exactly the same as you did with the short plane but take longer strokes this way much sweeter like this way we're getting the middle of the board let's see if I can put my light on for you just so you can see how much difference we've made to this board here can you see in there good I think that's important for you to understand what we're aiming for so this is definitely going into the end grain can I show you how I'm reading this grain I think I can. If I start down here, this annual ring, this growth ring, typical of oak, has the fast spring, early summer growth here, the later growth here. This is underneath this, is underneath this, is underneath this, all the way through to this pinnacle here in the middle. So this is underneath. Now this one is over the top of this, over the top of this, over the top of this. So these are sometimes, we call these cathedrals because they seem like they're the inside of a, a cathedral. They could also be called a nave like they do on a boat because if you imagine this, it's like an elongated boat. So sometimes it's called the nave in the wood. So we're looking for that, that's reading the grain. So I've got this end fairly smooth now. I'm turning around so I can go long grain with my plane again here. Now I'm going across the grain at a tangent like this and I'm going from this high point on the board here. I'm going right from this high spot. Let me see if I can. So I'm going from here because all of this is rising, rising up here and this is rising up here. So I'm going across those end grain fibers this is so much fun really so across here you can hear the difference it's not tearing now so I work towards this end and that rough grain that I had from planing into the end grain is disappearing with each stroke Is 
wonderful exercise. <laughs> Okay, now I start to elongate my strokes from this centre point here, reading the grain. I work along the grain and it's going to hit those high spots. So I've taken quite a bit less off now. And don't forget this fellow here. Wonderful piece of equipment. This totally transform, transforms the plane. Need a little bit more now. So I'm taking any ridges left from planing till I get that swoosh sound as a continuous shaving. This is feeling like silk already now. One splinter. A little bit more set. So you're micro adjusting this plane the whole time until you get this wonderful sound. The swoosh swoosh. Now this is hard work, it's not easy work, but it's very rewarding. So I am silky smooth, I've got no tear out, I have to check for a twist, uh, I have no twist there, perfect, right along its length, and I'm going to sight along here, I've got a very slight bow but very very slight so little that I don't need to take any more out. So now I have to run a gauge to get this other side off, but I'm going to do my two edges first before I get to the other side. I've got my board trued, dead flat. I have to make that face mark on here. I don't know whether a face mark, as I, I think I said it before, but just to show you, is the letter, the cursive letter F, meaning face but we take off this bottom part. So when we make the mark on here, we're prove, we've proved that this face is flat. We're approving it here, we're making the mark on here. Now we've got it. So now we work on the adjacent face. As you can see, these two edges, one is square cut, the other one is was bandsaw cut at a very bad angle for some reason. So I'm choosing this edge. Now this edge is not straight at all. It's got a belly in here and then it's hollow here. I have to get that out. So I'm going to put that in the vise, but this is much easier than this edge. So I'm going to get this in the vise, plane this edge, and I'm going to rip it down to five and a half inches for one of my projects. So I start here, I look along this edge, I already sighted it. I know there's a big belly in here. I could choose one plane or the other. It, this is entirely up to me. I could use a smoother and focus on the hump like this. Oh, this just feels so nice. So I can focus on this hump and I can move with longer strokes from the center hill either side. These shavings just pop right out like this. And I can take the bulk of this off take it from the vise, eyeball it, and I am, I've got rid of the hump here, now I have a hollow here, and this is why we usually rely on a longer plane. I like the weight of this lightweight plane. This is a bit like a thoroughbred horse instead of a draft horse. It's lightweight, so it lends itself to me. So I take off this high spot, and it's still spanning because I've trued the sole of this plane, it's still spanning this hollow. And now everybody will tell you 
that a short plane just follows the undulation, but that's not really true. It will if you don't know how to handle your plane. So I've taken a full length shaving and I don't know if you can see along there, this is actually pretty straight and you know casting your eye along a board is really quite an accurate way of doing this. Next I have to check it for square, so I do this just, wow look at that, I am dead square. So this is how you train your body to work the wood. So I'm already where I need to be. Now then, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to introduce one more plane here, this long one that I was using before, for this purpose. This is what this plane really benefits from, is from its longer sole. So I set this with a fairly shallow setting. The important thing when you're doing this is the plane has to be sharp. It's worth sharpening the plane up just for this. So you can see or you can hear, I'm getting a high spot here, nothing here and very little there, listen. And I'm getting a full width shaving where I started my plane, but on this outer edge where I'm exiting the cut it's going narrow, which means the board is slightly twisted on the edge. So I, I stay on this edge here. Can you see where my hand is? My hand is tracing either side of the board. I don't have to use the handle. I'm relying on the sole. If I do this and this, I can actually bend the sole of this plane and any other plane. So I'm just letting my plane just float across this top edge. The fingers of my right hand are tracing the edge of the board. Now this is oak. This isn't So I go all the way to the end, nice full width shavings now, nothing special about this plane. This is an ordinary plane, I'm going to check myself for square, I'm dead square, I'm going to check myself along the length and I'm dead straight. So I'm going to take one more, one or two more shavings, see what I do now. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm getting full width, full length shavings with my plane, but it's still fairly thick. So what I do now is I back my iron off a little bit. These are full length shavings all the way from one end to the other. So I back my iron off now, just a hair. So I'm taking less off. And this helps me to finalize my stroke see, from this. One thing I do now is I take, take this, just the oil, that will reduce all the friction and it's going to make this so nice to, to take this last shaving or two. My thumb is pressing down on the fore part of the plane. And that's my last shaving. I know that I'm dead straight. I know that I'm square. And it's a pristine, perfect corner. If I was book matching this, or if I was edge jointing this to another edge. When I look down here, I can actually see the camera in, in the surface of this wood. That's how smooth and slick this is. Now I have to cut this to width and for this I might set a gauge if my gauge is long enough to go to the five and a half inches. This one is so I'm going to set my gauge to five and a half which is there and I'm going to run a parallel line along my board here as a cut line all the way down like this to the far end. I'm going to flip my board over because this edge is now square. 
and I'm going to run a gauge line along this edge here. Like this. So now I've got a registration line. Remember what we do here now. We did the face mark on here. Now we have to do the edge mark because that's the edge from here on where the square and the uh, marking gauges will work from in everything we do. So I've got these two registration faces. Now I'm going to rip this down by hand using a rip saw like this one here, that's a cross cut. A, this is a fairly small tooth saw. So I'm going to saw, I'm going to stay away from my line by a sixteenth of an inch. I just flipped it end for end. So now I just have to plane down to my gauge lines again. This one's going to be a little bit easier than the last one. Again, I'm going to go for my smoothing plane just to take off any high spots left from the handsaw. You know, when you handsaw in these surfaces, it's not quite like a band saw, it's not quite like a table saw, not exactly. But they're really not far off. And the room isn't contaminated with too much dust. So I've got my gauge lines. I'm going to my longer jack again. Got my gauge lines still there. So here, woo, not very much taking off there. Uh, Again, remember this is oak, but look at it, look at this, it just glides like a swan on a lake. It's not bulldogging this plane down, don't get into that, it's not bulldogging it to the surface. You can use the side of your hand like this, thumb on the forepart, you can use the handle this way, the tote. Work back from one end to the other and then when you get those you hear that listen there's some vibration there people are calling that chatter but it's not chatter it's scudding it's very different all you need is a little bit of oil on the sole of your plane and this will eliminate 99.9% .9 of chatter is caused by friction on the sole of the plane so here listen Oh, so nice. I feel so good. Got my exercise. Feel pretty good. And that was a continuous shaving from one end to the other. And I'm happy I've got that done. Now I've got to do this other surface. This is where we have this cup in the board. Now as a result of drying. So on the other side we took out the belly which was cupped this way. Uh, now we have to take this out from this side. So just cinch it up in the vise. I'll show you what we're looking at from this side. We put the plane on here and I think that you should be able to see inside there this bright light coming through the middle. So I have to take off this side and this side and I think this, is, this goes usually much faster than the other side because you're taking off two small areas instead of one large central area. So I go back to my uh, pseudo scrub plane 
and I go on the high spots, which are these outside edges. One thing I haven't done now, I've got to do this first, is I've got to run a gauge line to my thickness. So my finished thickness, I wanted one inch. I've got to see if I can get one inch. If I can, I, the, the way I can tell is because this was cut in the middle here, I usually go on this end here and I can see, I think you may be able to see as well, but that gauge line is almost right on the edge, which means I probably will be able to get a good one inch board from this. So I'm going to run a gauge line down here. This is really a guide. So I can see how much I have to take off here and here. Less on this side, more on that one. I go along this length here. Quite a big belly in the middle here. If you remember from the other side, it was hollow. So we've got one eighth here, a sixteenth of an inch there. But this will make the whole board parallel. There's my gauge line. I go on to this end now because this is no longer twisted. Here, I didn't cut this to length on a chop saw, so it's still got chainsaw marks in here. Onto this face. So this looks like I've, ooh, I've got to take a lot off here. I've got a full one eighth of an inch on this side. But it's a one eighth, it's a one eighth of an inch diminishing to almost nothing in the middle. So I'm not feared, as they say in Texas. All right. Or is it, I'm not a feared. So I take off these bulky areas with this plane. You can see here, I think, it's going like this. So it's going So I literally just keep going until that stops. And I almost can see a continuous shaving occurring across the middle here. It would take a little bit more off. So this goes fairly fast now. I can't really go this way all the way because it's going to break this edge. So here and here just to get me down towards that midsection now. Once I'm flat, which I must be fairly flat here, which I am. Towards the middle. And I keep going, pushing myself, exercising my body like this. also keeps your blood sugars low. So flip, end for end. You can see already this is feeling pretty good. Now then, a little bit deeper setting. At first it feels like you're taking nothing off, but as those uh, high spots get reduced and leveled you'll feel it more and more like you're getting a workout now here I'm going in the end grain as we saw before so I can turn around and pull this way I don't have to check for twist now because I'm just planing down to my gauge line like this. I'm going against the grain there and I could turn around but as I said before 
going into the end grain when you're roughing down to size sometimes is to your advantage so I'm here again into that end grain using it to my advantage then turning round and levelling it does look as though I'm only just going to get a full thickness board actually I am going to get it because that's slightly bellied so I keep working on this midsection here like this and that's just surfaced that board If you ever want an undulated surface to look like an old tabletop, this plane does it. So I'm going to go with this one now and smooth up my grain. So I'm with the grain here, but every time I get to this spot, we're starting to go into the end grain so I have to work from that end now down the length towards the camera nice and smooth a little bit of oil if you're worried about contamination for spraying lacquers and so on don't because by the time you've planed this all the oil will be gone and you still have to scrape and sand this surface probably so there's a lot of stages before you get to that level and fish eye is a rarity not the norm so don't worry about fish eye on the surface by using the oil Oh. and I am done that's my board perfectly true smooth and ready for an apron in a table a tabletop whatever I want to make from it